Hi, today I'd like to talk about some drinking items that you have in silver and antiques. And the one I'm going to specialize on is the Moscow Mule. Okay, so this summer I went to one of my niece's uh, weddings and they were serving these Moscow mules in these copper uh, glasses. And I was interested because I'd never seen one before and uh, I thought I'll try this thing. And so all the young kids were drinking these and enjoying them. So I decided to try it and it was great. I really enjoyed it. So then for Christmas my wife was asking for ideas for drinks and I said why don't we have Moscow mules? And I had this Moscow Mule set that I'd had for a while. And I thought, I'll bring that home and I'll serve Moscow Mules. So I looked up the recipe and I made them and everybody seemed to enjoy them. So I'll tell you about the Moscow Mule. Okay, so what it contains is an ounce and a half of vodka, some lime juice, a wedge of lime, and some ginger beer. And you just fill up the, the copper mug with ginger beer after you put the other ingredients in there. It has kind of an interesting history to it. So the story is after World War II, vodka was pretty much unknown in the United States. With the popularity of it today seems sort of impossible, but yes, it was almost unknown. So the owner of Hubline, and his name was John Martin, bought the rights to Schmertenoff Vodka. And he was thinking of how he could market it. He went to this bar called the uh, Cock and Bull, uh, which is on Sunset Strip in Hollywood, California. And he was talking to the bartender about it. And he, was, he had another friend there. And they're all saying, how can we promote this vodka? And at the same time, the bartender, whose name was Jack Morgan, said, I've got a problem too. I make this homemade ginger beer and nobody seems to want to drink it. And then another guy at the bar said, well, I've got my own problems. I've got this big collection of copper mugs that I just inherited. I don't know what to do with them. And so here were these three items that really had nothing in common. And just these guys talking at the bar and they said, let's try making a drink out of the ginger beer, the vodka, and put it in this, in this copper mug. And it tasted great. And so they added a little lime juice to it and Smirnoff advertised it. And it became one of the most popular drinks of the 1950s and 60s. And then it absolutely disappeared for the last, you know, 40, 50 years. And now young kids are drinking it again. One interesting thing about it was I went to a restaurant and uh, I said, I'd like a Moscow Mule. And they said, oh yeah, we can make that. And they didn't put it in a copper mug. And it was nothing. The copper mug really makes the taste. I don't know how it does it, but it's it's amazing how th some things come about. Anyway, this little set that I have has a pitcher. It has four glasses of various sizes and a tray. And the set was given as an award in 1935. So actually, it, the original purpose was not Moscow Mules because the Moscow Mule was actually created in 1949 at this bar. So I'd also like to talk about other drink glasses. They're very collectible in American silver. So here's a martini glass. Here's a mint julep glass. These are very popular. Mint juleps, I don't particularly like the taste, but they are one of the most popular gl glasses that sell on Sterling. Here's a couple of champagnes. Here's a drink glass. And then this one they also made in silver and a regular tumbler. And then this last one is a water goblet. And these are very popular. This is the best selling drink glass we have. But most people don't use them for water. They use it for wine. Uh, we drink more wine, bigger portions than we used to. and so. The drink glass works very well for that. But anyway, 
have a Moscow mule on me. Thanks.